What's going on, everybody? I, as you guys know, well, some of you might know, but it's me, Chris Phoenix here. So, give a little review of uh, Team 8 Victory Road. That's right, Team 8 had a pay per view tonight. Victory Road 2012. And it's kind of interesting, real quick, because uh, to me, Victory Road has kind of had an interesting, to say the least, uh, history. A lot of people didn't like last year's Victory Road. I didn't like it. I didn't like. Uh, Victory Road 09, if you guys can remember that one. But uh, this Victory Road, I actually thought was pretty okay. It was okay. It was decent. It was alright. Uh, so, um, you know, just give a little thoughts and review of it. So let's get the show on the road, shall we? Uh, the show st uh, starts off with Bully Ray uh, coming out, cutting a promo. And then James Storm comes out and cuts a promo. And then they're like, okay, let's have a match. So we have Bully Ray and, um, oh, excuse me. We have Bully Ray and James Storm facing each other. And I really do wish these guys got more time. I really did. I thought they could get more time. I thought they could. But they didn't. They only got like three to four minutes. And I think that's a little bit has to do because of the fact of, you know, how do I say this? It, it, you can look at it anyway. You can look at it, oh, okay, they start off with a promo. So it's kind of like, okay, that took some of the time that could have been used in the match. Or they could have just, they rushed it. And this pay-per-view actually ended 16 minutes early, guys. This pay-per-view ended 7.44 over here, with, and I'm on the West Coast. So that's 10.44 on the East Coast. Yeah, this pay-per-view kind of ended a little early. But, um, hey, you know, they had a three-minute match. You know, I believe James Storm's his number one contendership was on the line. James Storm won, hitting his, his uh, super kick. One, two, three. James Storm wins. Obviously, it makes sense that James Storm wins, but... You know, I just wish this match was longer, you know what I mean? Because I think these two could actually put a pretty good match. You know, James Storm is pretty good talent in TNA, I think. And, you know, Bully Ray, yeah, you know, he's not the youngest son of a gun to ever live. But, you know, with his character, it's just fun to see him. You know, the way he presents himself and the way that he tries to entertain, which I think is interesting. So then we have... A uh, little backstage segment with uh, Jerry Boras is trying to interview Austin Aries, you know, the greatest man that ever lived. And Eric Bischoff basically comes in there, basically pushes Jeremy Boras aside, and instead Eric Bischoff does a little interview with Austin Aries for about a minute. And, you know, Austin Aries, and, and this is what TNA was doing this whole night too. TNA was trying to get this whole Twitter thing going. Like, you know when WWE goes over and says, oh, uh, CM Drunk is trending on Twitter, or... Uh, Hell in a Cell or, or uh, Hosky is trending on Twitter. You know, that sort of thing. Well, TNA has this whole, you you can tr make TNA trend on Twitter at hashtag Victory Road. And, you know, uh, I guess somebody asked a question on Twitter to Austin Aries. And he's like, oh, do you think Austin Aries should be in the main event or whatever? And Austin Aries is like, oh, well, every even though my matches aren't the last matches of the night... He is the main event, and his matches are the main event, and so on and so forth. So, they have Zima Ion versus Austin Aries, exhibition match, good match, one of the better matches, what I thought, uh, for the night. It was good, it was entertaining, uh, you know, it was kind of interesting too, because you got heel versus heel, I'll get to that later. Heel versus heel right now, and, you know, obviously, you know, probably TNA was more exciting with the whole Jesse Sorensen, and maybe Austin Aries would have dropped the title, maybe either now, or locked down if Sorensen didn't get injured. But, um, you know, overall, this was a good match. Uh, Aries uh, does a little submission move. Zima Ayan taps out. So Austin Aries, the greatest man that ever lived, you know, the longest X Division champion uh, in TNA history is still uh, the X Division champion. So I thought that was actually a pretty good match and pretty good ending. So then, was, so then we have our little tag team match, a tag team title match between Crimson and Matt Morgan versus Samoa Joe and Magnus. And believe it or not, I've been actually paying attention a little bit of uh, Impact Wrestling. And by the way, we also got a little video package of hyping the return of the Machine Gun, so Chris Saban could be returning soon, which is good with that show. So, you know, a little competition for the tag team champions. But, you know, I've been noticing lately of Impact, uh, you know, Crimson and Matt Morgan, it seems like TNA might be you know, making Crimson turn heel, you know, I thought entering this match maybe might turn heel, uh, you know, this match happened, Morgan, Crimson versus Mojo and Magnus, good match, good tag team match, uh, nothing to complain here, uh, it was okay, just, you know, the thought of, okay, Crimson turning heel, yes, Crimson did turn heel, 
Uh, Matt, he left Matt Morgan in the middle of the ring. Matt Morgan's like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, Samoa Joe Magnus beat him up, double team him, and they pick up the victory and retain the tag team titles in Crimson turn seal. And honestly, I think TNA kind of needed to do this because, you know, Crimson's character as a face was kind of like, okay, when Crimson came in, everyone was like, oh, Crimson, this is so cool. And now suddenly his character started to become stale. It was just like this big guy, whatever, that was just, you know, oh, you cheered for him, whatever. Now it's like, okay, he looks like a heel. He's acting like a heel. He wrestles like a heel. So it kind of fits in some sort of way. So, you know, this whole Crimson and Matt Morgan maybe locked down or something facing each other. Who knows? But it should be interesting to see their number. So then you have, this is when the pay-per-view kind of comes from really good to, kind of goes a little bit downhill, I think. You have Robbie E. come out there having his TV title open challenge. And oh, he has an open challenge. And who responds to his open challenge? Devon. That's right. Devon comes out. And within, I believe it was about five minutes, beats Robbie E. and becomes a new TV champion. What, what does this do? I mean, I know Robbie E. wasn't the best TV champion of all time. I understand that. I mean, obviously, Robbie E.'s character, even though he's a heel, it's kind of like a comic relief type of deal because it's just so stupid, it's silly type of deal. But Devon, I mean, unless you're making maybe Austin Aries win it down the road or something, I can maybe understand that. But Devon is your best option. Of being TV champion. What, what are they going to do with Devon? Like, nothing. I'm not saying they were doing something with Robbie E. Because obviously they weren't. But. Oh, God. And then you had the knockouts. You had knockouts women's match. Madison Rain versus Gail Kim. Oh, yeah. Especially before this. You actually had a Dixie Carter promo. But, you know. Backstage segment. But. Madison Rain versus Gail Kim. Now, if you guys know me. I ain't the biggest fan of Madison. Of. Well. I'm not really a big fan of Madison Rain either, but, you know, Gail Kim. You know, just, uh, I think this politics just kind of swing her way type of deal, but, you know, Madison Rain and Gail Kim have their match. It wasn't that long of a match. It was kind of short, I guess you could say. Normal type match. It was alright. I'm not going to criticize it too much, but, uh, Gail Kim retains the Knockouts title. That's right. Knockouts champion still. Gail Kim, man. Honestly, I would not be surprised. For, I don't even know why they even did this. What was the point of this? To break up their team? I mean, none of them are going to turn face after this. I really doubt Madison Rain's going to turn face. Gil Kim's not going to turn face. Like, what, what are they planning to do? Oh, I, I got an idea. Let me guess. Velvet Sky versus Gil Kim at lockdown, right? For the Knockouts title? Probably. So then you have the tag team match between AJ Styles and Mr. Anderson versus Daniels and Kazarian. First off, I'm glad to see Mr. Anderson back. You know, I kind of missed him seeing in the ring. You know, I know Mr. Anderson's talented. And, you know, AJ Styles, come on, he's a phenomenal one. Uh, you know, against Daniels, who's kind of, I don't know, it just seems like whenever Daniels is in, it has to be about AJ. If it's not about AJ, it's something that it's just not many people remember. And then you got Kazarian, which is good. Kazarian's a good young talent. I wish Kazarian maybe got pushed up a bit, maybe he could become X Division Champion again, or have a challenge for the TV title, or something like that, maybe he could Kazarian have something else to do, but, and I thought maybe, because they were making Kazarian's character look different, they were making Kazarian look like, alright, Kazarian's a character that, you know, he has leverage on a certain thing, he has leverage on, okay, he, he's attacking AJ Styles, why is he doing it, and Daniels is kind of freaked out, Daniels is like, man, where is this coming from, I'm not even controlling you type of deal, so, uh, yeah, so anyway, these two, these four have a match. Pretty good match. Uh, should have gone a little bit longer. Yeah, I thought it should have. Again, this pay-per-view kind of felt a little bit rushed. But overall, good match. Uh, AJ Styles hits the... Um, oh, man. AJ Styles does hits his finisher on... Uh, I believe he hit it on Daniels, I believe. He hit it on Daniels. Yeah, he hit it on Daniels. One, two, three. He winners uh, Anderson and, and AJ Styles. And that's right, he hit the Styles class for you. I wonder... So then we have Kurt Angle versus Jeff Hardy. And believe it or not, here are your top two kind of, not really selling guys, but actually, you take that back, they are kind of your selling guys, because let's face it, Jeff Hardy, he's over, and then some, we don't know that. And Kurt Angle, 
seasoned veteran. The guy's been there for like forever in the in wrestling industry. So he kind of had a feeling this was going to be a good match, and it was a good match. Um, and they actually did get a lot of time, believe it or not, Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy. It was a good match. Long match, but good. And, uh, you know, it, it, it kept on looking at this point that maybe Jeff Hardy would win, you know, let Angle would let him go over. Then all of a sudden, Kurt Angle all of a sudden rolls him up and just uses the rope for leverage and wins the match. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's just a typical TNA ending to a good match. They gotta ruin it. They gotta use a dirty finish. But this actually makes sense, believe it or not. Because what's, again, what's coming up soon? Lockdown. What'd be a perfect little build up for there? Jeff Hardy wants his revenge because he knows Kurt Angle cheated to win. Kurt Angle versus Jeff Hardy. Now, let me ask you this. If Kurt Angle flies off and hits a moonsault, I hope to God he doesn't botch it and hurt himself like last time when he faced Jeff Jarrett because that was just scary as hell. So then we had to finally head to our main event. Sting versus Booby Rude. Bobby Rude. In a no-hold-barred match. Non-title match. Nothing's on the line. And I think that, for me, kind of killed it a little bit. You know, for some reason, I'm one of those people that kind of... I like when things are on the line. I like when... You know, oh, this stipulation is, oh, if he loses, he's out of the company. Or if he loses, he's suspended for a month. Or if he loses, he loses the title. You know what I mean? There was none of that in this match. You know, there was no stipulation. But, you know, you did have a brawl. And let's face it, it's no whole bar. It's not going to be just a technical wrestling match. It's going to be a brawl. And that's what it basically was, a brawl. And I'm not complaining. It was good. You know, it seemed like for a while, they, they acted like it was a regular match. Like, they weren't... They were barely going outside. There was no weapons used or anything. I'm not saying the very first second you go get a steel chair. No, it was just like, okay, it was like, all right, eight minutes into the match, there's not a steel chair. Oh, ten minutes, we probably got a steel chair in the ring. And it, the match was good until the ending kind of made me laugh a bit. I mean, it was kind of comical. You have Sting getting ready to hit the Scor uh, Scorpion Depth Drop, right? He hits it on Bobby Roode, and the back of Sting's head hits the chair. So you use your finishing move, except for backlashes, and hits you in the back of the head with the chair. How the hell do you do that? Like, seriously, how the hell do you do that? Because that just, that just blew my mind, but... Oh, man. I'm telling you, TNA and their endings when it comes to Victory Rose is just classic. I mean, last year, this is bullshit, and that was last year, and then this year, but this is just, ugh. And then you kind of had at the end of the match, it was, yeah, they didn't end, at, you know, even though Bobby Roode won, uh, after it was over, you had, you know, Bobby Roode coming out of the ring, he left Dixie Carter, brought Dixie Carter in the ring, and then he tied Sting up in duct tape, and then we started seeing an interesting, sadistic, evil, uh, psychotic, I guess you could say, side of Bobby Roode, you know, with the chair, and, you know, he was about to hit him in the, ching, Sting with the head, in the, okay, he's about to hit Sting in the head with the steel chair when, you know, Sting's cornered in the corner. And then Dixie Carter's trying to protect him, and they're like, oh, no, don't do it. And, like, Bobby Roode was just screaming at Dixie Carter. And then that was it. That was the end of the pay-per-view. So, yes, guys, that was Victory Road 2012. It had its moments. It was an okay pay-per-view, you know. But let's face it, what are we all looking for? We're looking for lockdown. So, you know, I don't want to say there's a throwaway pay-per-view, Obviously, because it's before lockdown, but hey, you know, that's it for me. I wonder what you guys think. Comment down below. See ya.